Ooh, there's a fish. Oh yeah, there's a nice, there's a nice jumble there. That is a beauty. Tell you what, this is a phenomenal area for jumbo perch. We're in northeastern South Dakota, specifically we're in that glacial lakes area. And we're on one of the biggest lakes in this area, Wabe Lake. And this lake has been known for a long time as just a phenomenal perch lake. The beauty of this area is that there's a lot of other lakes around here too that are producing a lot of big perch. And realistically, it's probably some of the best perch fishing in the country right now. And that's what we're gonna do on today's show. You know, the, the beauty of uh, the Glacial Lakes area up here in northeastern South Dakota is, is that, you know, you're not, just, you're not just fishing one body of water in particular. Um, we, have, we have kind of a unique opportunity up here. You know, we have probably 30 to 40 different bodies of water within, I would say, a half hour drive of Webster, South Dakota that are, that are all just chuck full of of really nice perch, you know, you get a good 10 inch average, um, you know, but we're not limited as far as what lake we're fishing. If, if the bite gets slow on one particular body of water, you know, we can, we can just move, you know, 10, 15 miles down the road to another lake or even a slough and, and have great perch fishing potential through the ice. And also we have, we have the walleye fishing. That can be more, uh, more of a summertime type of thing or, or even uh, early ice and late ice, it seems like we do pretty well on them. But uh, hands down, you know, I mean, if a guy likes likes to have the opportunity to fish different bodies of water, uh, it's it's a great area. What we're doing is we're using the new ultraviolet buckshot. I've been having a lot of success with this lure for walleyes and perch. And you can catch perch on a variety of different things in these lakes. A lot of things work good. It's just a matter of finding out what works each day. But by and large, we're just gobbing up a lot of maggots on these bottom treble hooks. And these fish are pretty much eating invertebrates. Freshwater shrimp, bloodworms, things like that. But what I like about having that treble hook down there is that no matter how the fish approaches the lure, there's a hook facing the fish. And so you have a good batting average with these lures. The downfall of using a treble hook is it takes longer to get unhooked. But day in and day out, you can't beat a small spoon packed with maggots and beauty of the spoon is it gets down the down through the water fast so you can get back down on fish and it pulls fish in from quite a ways off and that's the whole key is you're fishing you know, these lakes and there's a lot of water out here and it's just a matter of covering water moving around and finding them and when you're dropping down each hole if you can pull fish in from 20 feet away 25 feet away you're just maximizing the area that you're covering that's the beauty of spoons is that these fish can see them and feel them from a long ways. Here comes one up right now. Another nice perch here. I tell you what, it seems like you get two or three of them on the graph and, and uh, they become a lot more willing to bite. Uh, you see here we're just using spoons tipped with maggots and, and uh, as Jason was mentioning earlier, you know, the the fish, generally speaking, are so aggressive. It's kind of nice to fish with a larger profile bait like a spoon because you can get right back down there on the fish so fast that it's almost an unfair advantage at times when you get a big school of them down there. So often I find that a lot of people are not aggressive enough when they're perch fishing. Uh, they think a perch is a pan fish, you know, and, and not a predator. and I think they're really limiting themselves. If you, if you approach perch fishing with a more, more aggressive mindset, I think you'll, at the end of the day, you'll be surprised at, at the bucket of fish you may, you may be able to have. Yep, got a little bit nicer fish here. So as you can see here, we got another another pretty nice perch. Um, he's definitely you not a monster. Oh, look at you! Got a Christmas tree down there. Yeah, Tell you what, yeah. I'm gonna just gonna drop in here quick. Tell you what, a lot of times it's a matter of keeping these fish around. See how he's unhooking that fish? So he's out of the water. I'm just gonna drop down. 
catch a fish here quick and just tag team them. But it's all about keeping them down there. And the quicker you can get that lure back in, the more likely you keep these fish from wandering off. I think of perch as having attention deficit disorder. Yes, very much so. You know, you just look at there. That's a that's a dandy. I don't think a lot of guys realize the importance, Jason, of, of keeping the perch around. You oh. know, uh, you get a hot hole going. There's nothing wrong with having a buddy of yours come over and and uh, join in on it because in the long run, you're gonna catch more fish out of the one hole before absolutely the, before the fish start roaming again. Yeah, absolutely. That's a dandy there. That is a nice perch. Yeah, that's that's why people come and fish with you right there, huh, bud? <laughs> <laughs> you ready to go? You go ahead and take the next one here. I'll be on standby here, catch that fish real quick. But yeah, you get that Christmas tree down there and they're all riled up. And that's the thing I've often noticed is- Yeah, I got an issue going here. You do? Okay, here, let me get back down there. You ready? Okay, here. I don't think this is gonna take long here. But you get these perch stacked up vertically where they're one on top of the other. Typically they just get more aggressive by default. And they are down there. Well, I think you also have the competition factor. Absolutely. You know, um, who's gonna get who's gonna get to eat the eat the prize? You yeah, know? absolutely. You get you get them stacked up in there and you don't want them to leave, and that's what we're doing here, is we're trying to keep them around. There room to get that fish down there? Absolutely, there sneak him right in. Look at him come up. He's just shooting up. Got him? Yep. All right. I don't think mine's quite as good as your first one you pulled out there though. But that's fine, we'll take him. Oops. <laughs> It looks like there's still some bigger fish in the school here. Better one here, Corey. Good deal. Oh yeah. Yeah, these are healthy fish. Healthy fish. I really like the colors on that spoon you're using, Jason. That yeah, that's a new UV color. And I tell you what, this UV stuff first came out, you know, the salmon folks probably talked about it the most, but I was somewhat skeptical. I'm not a really big color person, but I've caught so many fish on it that lure here this year that you're starting to become a believer <laughs> yeah i'm confident with it i can tell you that just for the grin of it let's see how they respond you drop back down i don't think there's any way you can really argue with what just happened <laughs> i had a gold uh Swedish pimple down there and, and you drop that UV buckshot back down and those fish those fish were negative yeah. when I dropped the gold on them and you dropped that back down there and it was there was no question they wanted it. Yeah I've been I've been catching a lot of fish on these all over. Oh there's a nice one there. That is a just a beautiful perch. I tell you what, Corey, I don't have enough maggots left on there to get the job done. Why don't you go ahead? Yeah, that, you never get tired of that. That's just a fun fish right there. You no, know, day in and day out when you can catch 10, 12 inch perch, it's, it's tough yeah. to beat. You know, look at the girth on these fish too. I mean, that's just an impressive looking fish. Well, I tell you what, the size of these fish are dropping off. I'm gonna drill a few more holes out this way here, Corey, and Keep tagging up on them here. See if we can't get back on the aggressive ones. Absolutely. As mentioned earlier, we were pretty skeptical of the ultraviolet color patterns at first. 
Our focus as anglers is being in the right place at the right time. We believe many anglers make the mistake of focusing on lures or colors before they find fish, and the cosmetics of a lure should be lower down on the list of priorities. There were many days on the ice last season, however, where prototypes of the new ultraviolet buckshot rattlespoon outfished traditional color patterns by a large margin. These new UV color patterns should definitely be on your Christmas list this season because these lures catch fish. So once you're, once you're getting into the late ice period here, um, at least speaking in our area of the Glacial Lakes region, most of the lakes uh, that I'm fishing all winter long, I'm looking for the mud basins. Our fish are generally feeding on, on different bugs uh, off the bottom and also freshwater shrimp. The fish tend to generally move up on top or on the edges of the basin instead of maybe out in the center like you'd find them all winter long. And generally speaking, the fish become considerably more aggressive. Um, one thing you want to look for is if you have a have a mapping system, you know, a GPS with you, with a you know a Lake Master chip or or whatnot. Look for inside turns on on an area that you know. Say you have your your mud basin out here or a mud flat, and you look for a nice inside turn like what we're fishing this morning out here. Uh, you want to find a spot that'll hold fish. Um, you know, when you're fishing the flats, you're, you're fishing fish that are roaming. When you get on a nice inside turn or, or maybe a point, uh, generally speaking, the fish will hang around a little bit longer. So you have a, you seem to have a little bit more opportunity to stay on top of them that way. That didn't take long. You gotta love it when half the auto zoom. Oh, through. I tell you what, when you're windmilling perch and it's pretty much one after the other when you get on them, that's, that's as good as it gets. Oh, there's a dandy there. Look at this one. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a football there. That is a dandy. There. Beautiful. I tell you what, you know, this perch fishing can be a lot of work in the sense that, you know, you're drilling holes, pull that fish back, drilling holes and covering ground and you get on them and it often seems with perch fishing where you catch 90% of the fish in that 10% window, isn't it, Corey? It, it really is. There's so much to be said about that, Jason. Look at there, you got one there too? I've yeah. just got, my screen is just lit up with them. Yeah, I think I have about three foot of perch on my auto zoom on my Vexler right now. Another nice perch. I tell you what, laid ice, I don't know if it gets any better than that. You know, you, you can put the small stuff away and start using the big spoons. Um, I, I tell you what, it's, it's probably my favorite time of year to, to fish as far as the ice goes, that laid ice period. The fish seem to get so aggressive and and uh i got another one here too corey oh nice <laughs> yeah you get them you get them going and it's it's almost like like you'd have to try not to get bit at times they start flying up off the bottom when you reach your auto zoom it's it makes for a lot of fun you know jason there's something to be said of oh you got another one about the different year classes of perch we're catching too. Um, you know, we're catching fish anywhere from six inches all the way up to probably, I suppose the biggest one today is maybe 12 and a half, 13. Um, we'll probably see fish bigger than that even before the end of the day. Um, it's kind of nice to see those smaller fish though, isn't it? I mean, you, yeah. know, you know your future is gonna be, is gonna be there, your future year classes. On this particular day, lifting the spoon high off the bottom and letting it fall brought perch in from afar. But don't be afraid to rip and exaggerate your jigging technique if there are no fish below you. Use the spoon to call in nearby fish. There could be a school of perch passing through 20 or more feet to the side of you, and if these distant fish can see your presentation, they will come over to look. Once fish do show up on the Vexilar, 
make a point to target the top fish in the school. By pulling off the top, you can lift the school higher off the bottom, which makes the fish more aggressive. When perch are not aggressive, they will swim next to each other and sprawl out across the bottom, schooling horizontally. When perch get aggressive, they'll stack up on top of each other and school vertically. You can often change the shape of the school by pulling fish off the top and holding a hooked fish above the rest of the school. If you can learn to change the shape of the school and manipulate the behavior, you are going to catch a lot more perch this winter. I like it when they do that and they just drop that spring bobber tip. Boom! Oh, there's a dandy there. There's a dandy. You know, when you watch these fish too, you know, when they come up and charge you like that, you know, and you, you try to pick off that top fish and you stick it and you see the rest of that school follow that fish up, that's a great sign, but sometimes you can kind of manipulate that by when you stick a fish, you just let it dig for a little while, bring them up off the bottom and hold them. If you can get the rest of that school to rise up a little bit and get them elevated and get them stacked up on top of each other, when you drop back down, those fish are gonna be a lot more wound up and a lot more aggressive. That's a little tip that helped me catch a lot of fish over the years. Yeah, look at how look how many fish showed up onto the screen here when I reeled up that last fish. You know, people talk about lures attracting perch, but nothing attracts perch like perch. There he is. That's about as good as it gets there. That's what you want to see is a Christmas tree of fish below you. There's a dandy here. Wow. Look at that. Look at that fatty. Look at the belly on that thing. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? And you know what, Corey? I've got about five feet of them down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is as good as it gets right there. Look at the girth on that. That's, that's what fishing in March is all about. You, know, you look at how fat these fish get this time of the year too. You know, I read somewhere that perch can you know, accumulate up to 30% more mass come March just from that egg, just that egg sack right there. But that's a beautiful fish. We'll get that fish in the water. Wow. You know, it's amazing how far you can pull fish in just with that commotion activity, you know it? Well, yeah, you get one fish down there and, and you know there's going to be fish off in the distance. You let him sit down there and dig instead of bringing him up right away. Look at that dandy. Yeah. Instead of bringing him up right away. And it's amazing how many fish you can actually pull in with another perch, you know. Um, it almost, it almost can. Well, then it's an attitude adjustment too, in the sense that you can struggle trying to get one to bite, and then you've got a handful of fish down there that aren't really interested, and then that commotion, that activity, that fish hitting the lure, and then that fish fighting can sometimes get the rest of those fish riled up too. Well, it's like it's almost like they turn the whole school oh. in a sense, you know. You know, what's interesting about a lot of these lakes too, the water's pretty clear. It's really good morning and evening bites and then typically it slows down, but see that sun's getting higher. And what's typical on these lakes, pretty good water visibility come winter time. So it's a really good morning and evening bite. So this fishing is gonna probably slow down, but you know, you can come back out here this afternoon and pick up right where you left off. To find out more information on Jason Mitchell Outdoors, make their official webpage one of your favorite pages. Find out upcoming show schedules and airtimes, along with past shows, article and product reviews at jasonmitchelloutdoors.com. Great information on the outdoors is just one click away.